Hello everyone, welcome back to Atreya Crochet. So in today's video, I'm going to be creating another scarf. It's a very textured scarf. To be honest, I'm a little bit sad to be creating a scarf, not because I don't love creating scarf tutorials for you guys, but because I've noticed recently that when I upload other types of videos, you guys don't really watch it. It seems like the only thing you guys are interested in are the scarf tutorials, which is fine, but there's so much more <laughs> to crochet like there's so many other things to explore i suspect that because this channel is geared mainly toward uh, beginners a lot of the beginners that watch it as soon as they see something that looks you know super complicated they turn away or say oh i can't do that it's too hard but i encourage you and actually i implore you to challenge yourself remember i create the content that i do for you guys for beginners. Of course, it's for all crocheters, but when I say I create it for you guys, the beginners, that means that I put a lot of detail intentionally so into my videos so that beginners can make these projects, can crochet up these products. Also remember that just because something seems complicated doesn't mean that it's insurmountable. Anything complicated or complex can be broken down into simpler steps. That's my approach. So if you take it step by step, and that's how my videos are constructed, and you trust that you can do it, and you trust that I'm going to give you everything that you need, you will indeed create the projects that I provide. Maybe one day <laughs> you guys will get the confidence to watch more than just my scarf tutorials. But in the meantime, that's the direction that I guess I'm going to keep going until you guys tell me or prove to me that you like other types of videos. As I said, the crochet world is vast. <laughs> in terms of uh, types of projects that you can make, things that you can crochet. I mean, it's as vast as creativity and we know how infinite creativity basically is, right? So yeah, I challenge you guys. All right, so not to admonish you, but to encourage you, challenge yourself. You can do this, you guys, and you have me for a while anyway. <laughs> All right, so things you will need. A skein or ball or cake of yarn. This is a medium four yarn, calls for 5.5 millimeter US. Of course, I'm gonna go with my six millimeter US J hook because of my tension. You will need some scissors and you'll need a darning weaving tapestry needle. If I find this, I will leave a link in the description. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start out as we always do with a slip knot. Take your yarn, wrap it around your finger, twist exchange. Now wrap this one around your finger that way. We're going to pull this over that one and off the finger while lifting up on the loop that's still on your finger. Insert your crochet hook and then pull to tighten. All right, so you want to crochet an odd number of chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. Now check the width. I think I'll go just a little bit wider. 14 and 15. Okay, so I landed on an odd number of chains, 15. For me, you can go wider if you want to. All right, so we're gonna crochet into the second chain from the hook. So this is the first chain, okay? This is the second chain. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna crochet in the back loops, the back notches. What do I mean when I say back notches? So let me take this out, make that loop big, just so I don't lose any chains. And I'll turn it over like that. So this, for this chain right here, that first chain from the hook, this is the notch for that chain. But remember, we're crocheting into the second chain from the hook. So we're not crocheting into that chain, we're crocheting into that chain. So for that chain, that be this notch. That's where we're gonna insert our crochet hook. So this notch or hump or loop in the back corresponds to the first chain from the hook. This one corresponds to the second chain from the hook and that's where we're gonna insert our crochet hook. So. Let's do it. We'll reinsert our crochet hook. Close that loop a little bit. All right. So first chain from the hook, second chain from the hook, but turn it 
to the back. And remember, we're skipping this first notch because that's the first chain from the hook. That corresponds to the first chain from the hook. We want to go there. So we'll go into it. I always think of Godzilla and, you know, <laughs> his back when I think about these notches. So now that I'm in there, you guys, we're going to make a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through to the front for two loops. One, two. Yarn over and go through two. One, two two. Let's do it again. Find the next notch which corresponds to the next chain. In this case, it'd be the third chain from the hook. Okay, so here's the next notch right there. That's where we're going to enter. Okay, so with the single crochet, you don't yarn over first. You just enter. So go into the notch. Go into Godzilla's back. <laughs> yarn over. Pull through to the front for two loops. One, two. Yarn over, go through two, one, two. Find the next notch is there. Insert, yarn over, pull through to the front for two loops, one, two. Yarn over, go through two, one, two. And you're just going to continue putting one single crochet in each of these notches, okay? When you get done, you should have a total of 14 single crochets for this row, okay? Because we skipped that first chain. So even though we chained 15, because we skipped the first chain, you should have 14 single crochets. So I'll see you there. So we have one more chain to crochet into, one more notch. See it right there. So we'll insert our crochet hook, go into Godzilla's back, that spike, and make your single crochet. All right, so I have 14 single crochets. Now you're gonna start every row, just like we're about to start row two. So you'll chain one, turn your work, into that first single crochet, we're going to slice the icing, so right where that chain is coming out of, we're going to slice the icing off the top of the cake and make a single crochet like that. Very good. Congratulations, you made a single crochet. <laughs> I like saying that. All right, now for the next stitch, this next single crochet right there, the reason that we crocheted into the chain stitches the way we did is so that when we turned it like this, it would look like chains on the bottom. So if we look at this next single crochet and go down, you'll see the corresponding top or bottom of it, right? What we're going to do is we're going to crochet into that loop right there. So watch. Here's the single crochet. We rotate a little bit. You'll see that it's this loop. We'll go from the bottom up through the loop like that, yarn over, pull through to the front for two loops, one, two, and then yarn over, go through two, one, two. And we've created a single crochet that way, okay? So basically we just grab the loop from the bottom and make the single crochet into that instead of going into the top of the stitch. So now we're just going to keep alternating, okay? The next stitch, which is there, we just slice the icing off the top of the cake, okay? And make a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through to the front for two loops, yarn over, go through two. But the next stitch, that's when we're gonna go down. So this is the next stitch. There's the loop at the bottom. You could also turn it and see that it's there, right? That's the whole bottom, but we're just gonna go in that part that we can see from the side view there, okay? That's where we're gonna insert our crochet hook. So this is the next stitch. That's the loop down there, so we'll come from the bottom, go through that loop, just that one loop, like that, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through two to create the single crochet. Slice the icing off the top of the cake, make a single crochet. Next stitch, we grab the loop at the bottom, this is the next stitch, but find the loop at the bottom there, just under it, go from the bottom up. So grab that loop, yarn over, and make your single crochet. Next stitch is there, slice the icing off the top of the cake. Okay. Next stitch is there, grab the crumbs from the bottom of the cake and make your single crochet. Slice the icing off the top of the cake, single crochet. Next stitch, grab the crumbs from the bottom of the cake and make your single crochet. Slice the icing off the top of the cake, single crochet. Next stitch, grab the crumbs 
the bottom of the cake single crochet slice the icing off the top of the cake in the next stitch and for the final stitch grab the crumbs at the bottom with this final stitch it can be hard to see the crumbs okay this right here corresponds to the one where we slice the icing but if we turn it we'll see that top so we're trying to grab right there okay there's the, there's the bottom the crumbs and then remember you only grab that one loop all right so now that you know where to go let's insert the crochet hook there and make our single crochet yarn over pull through to the front for two loops all right we have row two completed let's move on to row three which is just like row two chain one okay turn your work all right so with this row you're just going to look for these loops and they're pretty obvious okay so we're still going to be alternating but when you see a loop down here like there 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 and there that's when you grab the loop from down there and make the single crochet and then in the stitches in between the single crochets in between those where you see those loops that's where you make a normal uh, single crochet so since we turned and we see a loop right there instead of slicing the icing off the top of that first single crochet we're going to go down here grab the loop come up like that right and then yarn over pull through to the front and create our single crochet like that okay and then in the next stitch which is there we slice the icing and make the single crochet so loop grab the crumbs single crochet next stitch right there slice the icing single crochet there's a loop grab the crumbs single crochet next stitch and you notice you don't see a loop down there right that's the clue that you slice the icing single crochet let's look up oh, there's a loop right there grab the loop single crochet or grab the crumbs <laughs> okay next stitch slice the icing single crochet grab the crumbs single crochet slice the icing off the top of the cake single crochet grab the crumbs single crochet slice the icing single crochet grab the crumbs single crochet and then the final stitch slice the icing you can always give yourself that aerial view if you're unsure where the top is it may not be clear from this perspective but when you rotate and you slice the icing you see that top very clearly single crochet okay all right chain one turn your work all right so you can tell because you can always look for the loops but just in case it's not obvious yet there's a loop right there that's the second stitch that corresponds to the second stitch there's no loop here at the very beginning so that means it's a regular single crochet and if we go back this way we put a regular single crochet there right we didn't pick up the crumbs we put a regular single crochet in that last stitch so that means that you start with a regular single crochet now right there grab the crumbs single crochet slice the icing single crochet grab the crumbs single crochet okay so just to reiterate you guys this is regular you don't see a loop there but this is a loop regular 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 and we're gonna end grabbing the crumbs this is a loop okay I'm going to crochet get some length and then I'll check back in once I get to a different color just in case this color isn't working for your eyes I'll see you guys soon all right you guys so I've gotten to the length of the scarf but before wrapping up I want to show you in a solid color for those beginners who might find this color very difficult to uh, see what's what all right so let's just continue I chain one turn my work and 
In this one, I went directly into the top of the stitch. I sliced the icing off the top of the cake in that final stitch. So that means that on this side, that first stitch, that's exactly the same thing. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Slice the icing off the top of the cake and make a single crochet. Then I'm going to see for the next stitch, I'll see that sidebar, that loop there. Okay, so I just go down into it, get the crumbs from the bottom of the cake and make your single crochet. Slice the icing off the next stitch. Here's the sidebar, get the crumbs off the bottom of the cake. Slice the icing off the next stitch. Here's the sidebar, get the crumbs off of the next stitch. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep doing that, you guys. So, slice the icing, crumbs, icing, crumbs, icing, Icing and crumbs. So get make sure you don't switch your yarn and get the whole bar just kind of going sideways. Something to note is that first of all, I told you to crochet out an odd number. Okay, in actuality, it doesn't really matter, but I like the odd number so that I end up with an even number of stitches for each row. And if you do that, know that. When you slice the icing at the beginning of the row, you're going to pick up the crumbs at the end of the row, okay? So that's just something to note. Also, I told you this before, but when you chain one, we slice the ice. no, we picked up the crumbs here, right? So on the other side, we're gonna start out by picking up the crumbs, okay? So the way you end the row is how you begin it. Begin it. Slice the icing, okay? The way you end the row is how you begin it, <laughs> and the way you begin a row, you do the opposite to end it. And that'll just work out. It's just something to help you um, realize that you've done what you should be doing. Okay, so hopefully this makes it clear. Let's get back to the scarf. All right, so just to prove to you that I wasn't just talking, <laughs> um, I started this row by picking up the crumbs. You can see that loop, right? See that single crochet is picking up that loop. So that, those are the crumbs, right? And I said, it's the opposite. You do the opposite thing. If you have an even number of stitches, you do the opposite thing that you did at the beginning. So I picked up the crumbs. If I go across, I see that I sliced the icing in that final stitch. Okay. All right. So for the final row, you guys, chain one, turn your work, and guess what? We're just going to put a single crochet in every stitch across. Okay. So just slicing the icing off the top of every stitch across. The reason we're doing this roll this way is because we want to end the way we started. You guys know I'm a huge proponent of symmetry. <laughs> I like it. In fact, I love it. So, uh, yeah, just put one single crochet in every stitch across. This camera really likes to, it's, I don't know, I gotta f figure out how to adjust it. It's been getting so blurry, or blurry so frequently in a lot of these recent videos, it wasn't like that before, so I gotta figure out what the deal is, but don't worry, I'll figure it out, you guys. Alright, and then chain one, and then you'll cut your yarn, and you'll weave in that tail. Okay? So I'll take my darning weaving tapestry needle, feed it, feed the yarn through the needle, and then go through some stitches in one direction. Okay, like that, and then taking a slightly different path going back in the opposite direction. And this is very good, so you definitely won't see it. I mean, you wouldn't see it anyway, but you definitely won't with this yarn. See how that happened? I don't like that. And you guys know I'm a perfectionist, <laughs> so I'm going to do that over just because, yeah, I want it to be seamless. So I'm going to wrap my yarn, roll it actually, so we'll all fit through the eye. Make sure I get all of it through the eye, okay? And then, yeah, take that slightly different path going back the other way. 
when you guys mess up or you know it's not quite how you want it take it out and redo it that's how it was taught and then you don't have to look back on it and you know always notice that eyesore you know that it was done correctly don't half do anything <laughs> that's how I was raised all right cut your yarn down and there you go okay so I'm going to weave in this tail and then I will show you the finished finished product all right you guys this is the finished product so this scarf and I still have this much of the cake left believe it or not <laughs> uh, but yeah I used about 72 inches okay and that's about 183 centimeters okay and I still had more okay so that was the length um, but yeah isn't it beautiful the good thing about this um, stitch is it's stretchy that whole interlacing that you're doing by pulling basically pulling up a loop from the previous row it creates a stretchy effect so when you wear this it's going to droop a little bit um, lower than the actual length would suggest uh, but i love this colorway i love how the yarns the, the colors just kind of bleed into the next one um, and i like the the colors that they chose for this colorway too you know red pink turquoise till or blue orange lime green it's just really cool and i also like the 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 fact that the there's like a tie-dye effect too so yeah it's just really cool this scarf is going to take you a few hours okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna be honest um anytime you're working with shorter stitches like the single crochet it kind of slows you down because you don't get as much height as quickly also because we're going down a row and pulling up a loop it's not as quick of a process you have to kind of uh, be more precise with your crochet hook to make sure you're getting into the loop and not splitting your yarn and things like that okay so it's gonna take you a few hours just put on you know a movie or something a couple of movies and um, yeah get to crocheting don't be in a rush to finish it you will finish okay um, but just enjoy the process and enjoy if you use a nice colorway like this uh, enjoy the changing of the colors. That's one of my favorite parts of I get so excited when a new color is is approaching and then when I switch over it's like ah oh, yes. So just when you get sick of seeing orange then that lime green comes and when you get sick of seeing that lime green then the blue comes or the turquoise right. Get sick of seeing pink then the teal comes so yeah it's just really cool. Yes as I said I will put a link to this this uh, yarn in the description box okay so check that out if you want to know exactly what I used. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video, but you know I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, happy crocheting.